Hi, my name is Bogrinja and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, I just wanted to give you a quick update on the Mizuno analog experiment. This is an experiment being conducted and spearheaded by Alan Goldwater in California in his Magic Sound Lab and he has been working very diligently over several months. Uh, we want to make this a really proper uh, um, shot at this. And uh, so uh, in the uh, MFMP's website, I've embedded the document that he's authoring. Um, and uh, it was last revised on the 4th of March, as per this video. Uh, and he's done several calibrations uh, with argon and uh, with, with uh, hi hydrogen in the cell. And you can go and examine this uh, in the live document. Um, uh, he's got a couple of thermocouples on there at zero 90 degrees angle uh, on the circumference to give some indication of the radial heat distribution. And uh, he was uh, told that there was going to be some anisotropic thermal behavior with that. Um, he's also uh, uh, implemented the uh, loaned, uh, very accurate um, uh, residual gas analyzer. And this actually works on a process basis. We'll actually be able to analyze the gas uh, as uh, the experiment is being conducted. And uh, in this uh, calibration here, um, the isotopic ratio of 36 argon to 40 argon uh, at around at around 0.4% gives some in confirmation of the residual gas analyzer uh, detector accuracy. So this is a spectrometer. It goes all the way up to, I think, 87 or something. So um, that should really uh, give us a chance of uh, knowing what's going on in the reactor. Uh, and uh, he's uh, added some clips on here um, uh, and he's got this capped on tape here because it's got a kind of a known emissivity and this is working with the Optris camera and uh, he's uh, it, it just recently put the the nickel mesh in there not cleaned or sanded anyway you can you can read the art uh, the um, updates in here uh, that he's working on um, and uh, he's got a, a heater power there to temperature calibration there um, and it, it, he actually found that on the Bob Higgins uh, open uh, neutron counter that at uh, several points uh, around about 175 to 250 degrees C, uh, I think that's with the nickel mesh in there, uh, but no, no particular hydrogen in there, um, uh, and not knowing the nickel mesh interior temperature, there were some extra neutrons, but this may actually just have been some cosmic uh, uh, neutrons. The, the, the Higgins detector is quite sensitive. Okay, so you can see the apparatus here. Uh, this is the reactor. Uh, this is the Higgins neutron detector. This is the uh, gas, residual gas analyzer, process gas analyzer, analyzer. And you can see it's all wired in there. And he'll, he'll have this This over here is a, the lead cave with a spectrometer. Uh, but I don't think that's in the use in this particular experiment. And uh, uh, so you can have a look at that. Uh, here's another view, uh, kind of a reverse angle. So you've got a camera overview. I think the optress is uh, looking somewhere. I can see the optress. I don't know whether I can see the optress in that. Um, but anyway, um, what we have need for this for really the next stage, uh, um, which I'll come on to in a sec. I just wanted to show you this. This is a funky little chart that shows uh, that captain tape across the width of the reactor uh, going from 20 watts up to 100 watts in, in the calibration. And uh, he discusses why there's this little dip here in the middle and uh, some things he wants to do to resolve that. But the new software does this uh, funky thing where you can plot these kind of uh, charts here. So um, this will give us uh, some really good data to work with. And I think he's saying that the um, Optris temperature measurements track the thermocouples to within plus or minus one degree centigrade over the entire range. So uh, we're going to get some really lovely data out of this. So... Um, essentially, the, the, the needs are currently uh, for our uh, deuterium uh, uh, gas. And uh, we have a choice of either to buy uh, or to find the money for uh, a full litre of D2O. Uh, and that's going to cost about $1,300. And then we can just synthesise what we need on the go for this and other experiments. Uh, or we need to get a supplier to provide us with a D2O bottle, uh, which costs about $300. Now, um, this is a little bit more risky because it's a hydrogen isotope um, and uh, you're limited to having to keep buying more. But that's a lot of gas, actually, for Lenner experiments. 
Um, so that there it is. That is, that is your brief update of the Mizuno analog experiment. If you want to drop some comments in here, fire away. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you in the next update.